Good afternoon from Xi'an, everyone, and uh, welcome to a new session of our webinar for XJTU online promotion. And today, as you have just seen in the short video that we have invited the Jinghe Center for Economic Research, the GCER, to uh, introduce the, the school and the, the study life. And today it's our honor that we have uh, invited Professor Wei Hongzeng, the Vice Director of the Jinghe Center for Economic Research, to share with us. And uh, let's welcome Professor Zhong, please. Okay, yeah. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's my great, great pleasure to be here with you. And my name is Wei Hongzeng. I'm the Vice Director of the Jinghe Center for Economic Research. And firstly, I would like to appreciate our School of International Education for organizing such a wonderful session for introduce our economic program. And on behalf of JCER, I would like to make a brief introduction of our center for education of economics for the following students. Okay, now let's start. Okay, so there are four basic contents today. Firstly, I would like to give you some information about our JCER, including our faculty structure, our student structure, and also the basic history and development. And then I would like to give you some information about our basic curriculum and our research, and then talk about some wonderful life of the JCER when the students stay in I Harbor. And finally, I would like to have some interactions with all of you. Okay, so the first part. So to think about Jinghe Center for Economic Research, I guess you might have some questions in your mind. Maybe you were asked why this center called Jinghe Center for Economic Research? And what's the difference between this center and other school of the university? And uh, what kind of students they want? Okay, so after this part, I think you may find the answer. So let's talk about the history of the development of our center. So basically, this is the timeline of our center. So early in 1996, our founder, Professor Ethan Guo, at that time, he actually is staying in the Chicago University. And he's a person who loved this country so much. So he think even after over 20 years of reform and economic reform and opening up policy in China, still we lack, we still lack a large scale of the economists who can make the dialogue with the foreign countries. So at that time he think, is there any possible to establish a kind of economic research in mainland China? And by chance, as you know, Xi'an Jiaotong University actually moved from Shanghai uh, 60, over 60 years before. So by chance, a, one of the, our alumni who introduced Professor Yi Guo was the leader of our Xi'an Jiaotong University. And at that time, Xi'an Jiaotong University is still uh, a uh, pure uh, engineering discipline university. And the leader think if this university will become a comprehensive university, the social science discipline should be established. And as you know, economics is actually the basic discipline of the social science. And it's just like the position of the physics in the engineering discipline. So, from very beginning, after a short discussion, Professor Guo donated his first fund of 150,000 US dollars to the university and then jointly established this center called Jinghe Center for Economic Research. And why it is called Jinghe? Jing in our Chinese language, it means industry. He in our Chinese language it means agriculture. So that means after the certain development of the industry and the agriculture, doing the research of economics is so much important and necessary. 
So that's why we use this name Jinghe Center for Economic Research. And then from the very beginning, we started our dual degree program for undergraduate students. And first in 2000 year, we enrolled our first class for master students in 2000. And that class is only 20 students, like what you have seen in the video. It's a small class tape. And then afterwards, we enrolled the first class of PhD students. And in 2007, our first a PhD student graduate. And afterwards, in 2008, our president encouraged us to open a new program, which is called Quantitative Economics and Finance. It's an undergraduate sophomore, an undergraduate program. We combine with the uh, some some other university together to be a comprehensive university. So at that time we have the school. At that time we just transferred twenty students from the other major to be a class for undergraduate study. And then in two thousand fourteen we transfer for in the two thousand sixteen uh, with the situation of the initiative of One Belt, One Road, and uh, based on our advantage of the international uh, the graduates. And at that time, we just enrolled the students who can speak Chinese to join with us with, for our undergraduate study. And then in 2017, we start a pure English program for master and PhD program. Okay, so then in 2016, our undergraduate program expanded to 30 students, and right now it expanded to 35 students. So totally, so right now we are a center with the students totally, including the undergraduate program, master program, and PhD program. Okay, and for the faculty structure development, basically, you know, in the very beginning, because the lack of the uh, pure economics. So we have to invite some of the professors who is working in the top university abroad to fly in to give us incentive courses. This about 10 years from 1997 to 2007, most of our faculty is actually what we call visiting professor groups. So every year we have over 30 visiting professors overseas fly in to give the different incentive courses for the students. And then from 2008, we started to recruit our permanent professors and also Professor Guo and one of the co-founder, Professor Wu Chuntian is also trying to work in the center to recruit the permanent professors here. So, at that time, we, we leave some of the PhD student graduate from our center to work with us. And then recently, in to start from 2016, we, uh, as you know, some of the excellent students who actually uh, got the very well trained in the economic program in the top university, they also want to come back to teach so every year we recruit two to four, three to four young faculty who graduate from top university in different countries. So these are the basic development of our faculty group. And then let me introduce our faculty bit information. The first one is our director and also our founder, Professor Guo Yusen. Uh, in English is Yi Sun Guo. He's actually the master in economics in, from Chicago University. And his research field covered industry organization, theoretical economics, information economics. And his good friend, Professor Hu Chuntian, he's also our co-founder. He got PhD in economics in Princeton University and he basically interested in the international finance and macroeconomics. And then 
one of the professor named Zhang Guoping, uh, in English is called Ping Zhang. He got PhD in economics in University of Pennsylvania, USA. And he's right now working in our center after he, after he retired from Taiwan. His interest is about derivative pricing, cooperative finance and industrial economics. And Professor Wei Chou, and in Chinese is Zhou Yutian, who is actually uh, our Changjiang scholar of our uh, education bureau. And he graduated from University of California, San Diego. As you know, a lot of economists, they, 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 a lot of famous economists who graduate from there. So his major is actually covered about the finance econometrics, time series analyzing. And here is a young talent, Yilan, who just uh, joined with us this year. She actually got her PhD in environmental science from Cardiff University in the UK. And he also worked in the resource and environmental economics, global carbon market and trading. And this is where is actually really hot recently. And then our associate professors, the first one, my name is Wei Hongzhen here, and I got a PhD in political economics in the University of Tsukuba, Japan. And my research area covers a health economics, econometrics, aging and health. And another one is our Yu Weihua, Professor Yu Weihua. He got the PhD in our Jinghe Center in economics and his research area covers quantitative history and conflict economics and global climate change. And another colleague is Zhou Xiangyi. He is actually also one of the alumni of our Jinghe Center for Economics. He got the PhD here and stayed and working with us. So his research area is empirical cooperative finance, applied microeconomics, venture capital and private equity. And Professor Zhang Yi, she actually got her PhD in the Netherlands University, Woodlitz, and he, her interests cover about the multiple uh, multinational corporate, uh, multinational cooperation, international trade and investment, regional economics, institutional economics. Okay, and our young Chinese faculties, we have right now you can see eight young Chinese faculty. The, for the top one is Zhao Yuan, who is actually just got the PhD from our Jinghe Center. And her research area is research and environmental economics, residential energy consumption. And here uh, on the right upper corner, corner uh, Dr. Qin Bo Tao, he is actually the master student uh, from our Jinghua Center and then go to the United States to get her PhD, uh, get his PhD degree. And uh, he got PhD in economics from University of Wyoming in USA. His research area is resources and environmental economics, industrial organization, experimental behavior economics, and applied microeconomics. And the next one is Chen Xiaodong. He is actually uh, a PhD from Cardiff University. And he is focused on the macroeconomics related like fiscal politics and endogenous growth, mathematical modeling politics, and indirect inference testing and estimation. And then Dr. Ma Jie, she got her PhD in economics in India, Uni Indiana University, Bloomington in the United States. And he is actually interested with the same area with mine. He is, uh, she is interested in the health economics, medical and health policy and applied econometrics. And then uh, Hu Lin, Dr. Hu Lin, he 
She actually got her PhD in economics in University of Adelaide, Australia. And she works on the governance and institution policy, game theory, microeconomics, political economics. And then let's see the left hand side, Shi Long. He is actually graduated from University of Oklahoma and he's working on the IO, Applied Microeconomics, Applied Econometrics. And then Dr. Li Jing, she got her PhD. He, she actually got double uh, dual degree of PhD. One is from the Tilburg University in the Netherlands. Another is from the University of Turin, Italy. He, she actually interested in the financial econometrics model uncertainty asset pricing and pension funds. And then Dr. Li Yingxue, she is actually graduated from the University of California at Davis, USA. And she works on the ex, uh, behavior economics and experimental economics, and also do some theoretical model of game theory and microeconomic theory. And then the last page about our permanent faculty, we have four young foreign faculty. The first one is Dr. Wu. He is actually a Korean. He got a PhD, he got his PhD from University of California at Davis United States. And he's working on the microeconomic theory, game theory, strategy, interaction in communication political economics. And also next one is our India professor whose name is Bibaswan. He actually got the PhD from University at Buffalo SUNY and he's working on the corruption research and also applied theory, law and economic economics and also some research related to the economic growth. And the next one is another Korea uh, whose name is Kim. Professor Kim is graduated from Virginia Tech in the United States and is working on the macroeconometrics model in time series analyzing empirical macroeconomics. And the last one is our young faculty, Dr. Lee. She is also in Korea faculty. She graduated from Korea University in economics and she mainly focused on the econometrics, applied econometrics, panel data model, sample selection, attribution. So as you can see, these are the basic, uh, our permanent faculty everyday teaching. So if I conclude about the characteristic of our faculty team, I think we have three basic characteristics. One is diversification. We actually graduate from the different corner of the, all over the world, from American UK, from Netherlands, from Japan, from Korea, from Australia, from Italy, different countries. And also the second characteristic, I think I can conclude as internationalization. Of course, the nationality here is not the problem and the language is also the, not, the, not the problem in our center. And the last one is rejuvenation. That means the average age for all our young group is not more than 35. So this very energetic faculty group will help to promote your study, of course, okay? So the still for the developing of over 24 years, still we keep the visiting professor groups to fly in to give us some incentive courses uh, always. So the basic structure is that permanent faculty plus the visiting group. So for our undergraduate program, the majority of the teaching will taken by our permanent faculty but for the master program, uh, for the master and doctor program, the majority courses was taken by uh, visiting professors. But recent years, we actually, most of the courses right now covered by our young faculty. 
and almost all the teachers uh, got the PhD degree in economics for the well-known universities. So I can conclude our main research fields as macroeconomics, monetary theory and policy analysis, public finance and welfare economics, international economics, law and economics, IO and regulation economics, game theory and application, financial theory and demonstration, labor and health economics, resource and environmental economics, environmental protection, low carbon economic, carbon market, green finance. And recently we increased some new topic uh, like AI and econometrics. Okay, now let's move to the introduction of our student structure. So right now we have over 2, 000, uh, 220 students together as enrollment. And with half of our students are undergraduate students. Like this graph, you can see over half of our students are undergraduate students with blue color. And we do have our Chinese graduate students, master students, and PhD students. And master students is actually two times of our PhD students. As you can see for the orange, orange color and gray color here. And for the international students, right now we have totally 35, not so much, and including seven PhD students and 28 master students here. So as you can see for the graduate program, basically our international students takes the one third of the total proportion of the uh, graduate program. And this table showing the every year from 2017 till 2021, every year how many students we recruited and finally entered our center. Totally not so much, but every year we keep uh, a little bit stable situation. And then these are the basic uh, students who are come from different countries. In 2007, uh, we have students from Pakistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Thailand, Tajikistan, and Palestine. And in 2008, we have students from Bangladesh, Nepal, Nigeria, Luanda, and Tanzania, Pakistan. And this table, uh, this graph is showing the graduation rate as the light blue color. For the dark blue color is our total number of the students. So as you can see, basically not all the students can graduate from this program because we actually doing very serious education. So, but if you really want to study and very diligent in study, we hope you can got, finally got the degree and can be graduated from this program. And also this is about the 2019, 2020 and 2021, the students still from the different area of the country and mm, to be different from the last page, we have some students from South Africa and also uh, from North America, uh, okay, like Canada students. So uh, the number keeps stable for every year. And of course, we hope more and more students would like to pursue their master or PhD students here. And of uh, course, the board suffered about the COVID-19 suddenly two years before. So for the recent two years, the students have to take the online education and cannot enter into our mainland China. So still, I think this is the sudden happen situation. And we hope and after several struggle with the coronavirus and then the reopen of the, the, the campus and the university will welcome some more 
international students to come to join with us. And this is the master graduation rate in 2019, still not too high. Okay, then the second part, I would like to introduce the education and the research situation of our center. So the motto of our center is actually, we say, learn from the East and West, practice and prosper all over the world. So started from 1997, our center insists to adopt the most advanced economic education mode and aims at cultivating a group of innovative talent in the economic area. So right now, our center has gradually grown into one of the Chinese top economic research center and teaching institution. And these are the two key points of our education. The first one is high standard education. Our curriculum is actually parallel with the top university of economic department all over the world. And the second one is that we hope we can train the students both in theoretical learning and practical ability training. So these are the second points. And the, the, the last one is rigorous assessment. That means every step we do very serious education and, and we hope all the students who want to come to Xi'an Jiao Dong and to come to study economics, he will follow all the evaluation and uh, serious training of this economic training. Okay, this is the curricular for the undergraduate program for you to refer. So basically, I think most of the foreign students coming to our center is like to pursuing the master and PhD degree. And uh, most of you might have got the P, uh, undergraduate bachelor degree. And, and these are the pre-courses if you want to come to our center. If it is possible, you can prepare to have some kind of training uh, about the ba basic undergraduate courses like principle of economics, programming theory, applied statistics, intermediate micro, intermediate micro, macro and micro, and basic econometrics. And also we do have some like finance courses, mathematical economics, and also international trade macro courses. And these are the basic undergraduate curriculum for you to refer. I don't want to spend so much time on this. And I think you might concern about the curricular for the international graduate program. So our master program is lasting two years, only two years. And the major is applied economics and theoretical economics. You can choose applied economics. Otherwise you can choose theoretical economics. These are the two different uh, discipline. And also our PhD program lasting for about three years program and it lasting uh, and most of the students cannot quickly get the, uh, get the PhD from three years. Maybe it still uh, need four or five years. So the major is just uh, applied economics. So these are the basic public courses of our master students like the outline of China, comprehensive Chinese governance reform in China. These are the compulsory public courses for you to understand Chinese economic. And the major courses uh, taught by our center is analytic method of economics, intermediate micro, intermediate micro economics, and econometrics and also advanced microeconomics one. These are the degree compulsive, compulsory courses. And then we have elective courses, including advanced micro, macro, time series analyzing and panel data analyzing. This star courses is compulsory for the PhD students. 
And also we have some elective courses like cooperative, oh, I'm sorry, like, like cooperative finance, international trade, industrial, industrial economics. And we do have a serious lecture for frontier economic research. All our faculty I just introduced, a, I just mentioned, will have a two hour lecture to introduce their research. And some of them will tell you the economic story about the China uh, developing, okay? And uh, for the compulsory activities, basically you need to attend some lectures and also you need to finally write the thesis proposal and midterm assessment. Okay, these are the basic curricula for the international students program. I made a table, uh, it's a, not a table, it's a course map for the student to understand the structure of our economic training. So basically the economic courses for the master and PhD students consists of three parts. One part is about this micro courses, which I marked as green triangle bar. And another part is the macro courses I marked as yellow triangle bar. And another one is econometric courses I marked as purple triangle bar. And from the top to the end, basically from the top, is our fundamental courses like basic principle and intermediate and advanced economics, including the micro and macro courses and also the econometrics. And the downward parts, which I marked with the light blue color is actually our selective and uh, selective courses for you to choose including the cooperative finance, I.O., international trade, labor economics, international finance, and new institutional economics, time series, panel data, and basic econometric analysis for you to choose. And finally, we will have a series lectures for frontier economics. So these are the basic scope of the economic training. And then you get the basic fundamental economic training and also some applied uh, uh, advanced courses for you to do further research or to go to the job market. Okay, so for the schedule arrangement for the master and doctor program, basically, as you can see, we have three basic schedule. One is course study, one is thesis writing and final defense. And for the courses study, uh, both master and doctor program lasting for whole years. So before you entering the university, you may have um, to do some pre-study or review of the previous courses related to the economics. And then you have to take one year curriculum courses and after all the courses passed, and then you can enter to the second step of the thesis writing. And for the thesis writing, basically we have topic opening, regular report and midterm check for all the students. We are sitting together to present one by one and the faculty will give you some comments and suggestion to promote your research. Okay, this is about the thesis writing. And finally, defense, basically, in the very beginning of the thesis writing, we have opening a presentation and midterm. And afterwards, after about three months, we will have midterm check. And in every year uh, in March, we will have pre-defense. And finally, in May or June, we will have final defense for the graduation. Okay, so these are the basic schedule arrangement for the degree study. And also in 2018, with the support of the International Training Program, financial related curriculum system, our center was approved by CFA Association and become one of the university affiliation program with American CFA Institute. 
So it actually marks an important step in the process of specialization and internationalization. So the approved program of our center, including two programs, one is our bachelor program, another is our master program. The, the name of the, the, the degree is called in bachelor is called quantitative economic and finance and uh, the master degree is about applied economics okay and for the academic activity basically we do have three types of academic activity the first part is about the academic forum or big conference so this is the picture uh, we have taken in 2016, and the forum is called World Economic and Cross Street Innovation Development under the new situation. So we invite the, the scholar from the different place to hold a big conference, and these are the pictures of the keynote speakers. So I think you may recognize some of the uh, famous Chinese economics, like Justin Lin. Uh, he's actually the pre-chief economist of the World Bank in the agriculture sector. Okay, so another type of academic, academic activity is the invited seminar. As you know, every year we still have several professors visiting here. So, uh, and besides their teaching, we always ask them to give us the lecture about their recent research. So these are the pictures we have taken from the different scholars. Um, this, this is a kind of irregular academic activity and all of our students, including undergraduate and graduates can uh, sit and listening to, to their uh, recent research. So this picture is William Branson, who is from Princeton University. And this is a famous Zhou Qiren from Beijing University. And Stephen Zhang, uh, who is very famous in Hong Kong, University of Hong Kong. And he also got the PhD in the United States. And also Richard Carson, the University of California, San Diego. Okay, so these are the, just we, we cut some of the uh, points for the inviting professors. Okay, so the third type of our, our academic activity is our regular workshop. This workshop is actually arranged regularly every week, what we call JCER Weekly Economic Seminar. And we invited some of the young researcher from the broader university in mainland China. And some of them may be from Hong Kong or Taiwan and Macau. They, they come here to have a lecture every Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and some of them uh, in English and some of them, their presentation may be in Chinese. So, Every semester we have on average 16 seminars uh, regularly uh, uh, organized in every week. So this will help our students to found the interests of their research and also to think about if it is suitable to go further study, okay. Then, Maybe you concern about the employment and the further education. So for our undergraduate program, it's actually uh, very uh, successful for the students to go further study. And recently the students can graduate uh, to go to the Princeton, MIT, Chicago and University of Oxford, LSE, uh, like such a kind of university uh, to go further study for pursue their master and PhD degree. And 20% of them stay in mainland China for their further study, like Beijing University, Tsinghua University, Renmin University, Shanghai Jiao Tong University, and Fudan University as well. And only 10% of them get job directly, but they basically 
can enter very famous uh, uh, entrepreneur like McKinsey, Alibaba, Tencent, and Bitdance. And also for our graduate program, uh, about 15% of them go for the study uh, to PhD degree. And some of them go overseas and some of them stay at mainland. And 9% of them go to the research institution or the universities. And uh, almost half of them, almost half of, the 45% of them go to get a job in the financial institution. And only 10% of them uh, go to state-owned companies or civil servants. And some of them also doing the work in the consulting companies or accounting firms. And some of them, only uh, over 10% of them, actually they doing some like freighter, Okay, so then the student life here. Okay, as you can uh, get some information from the international education school. So basically I, I cut some of the <clears throat> episode of the student life in the iHarbor of our foreign students. So this picture is taken for our orientation. Every year we will have our center orientation for the students. Uh, to help you to understand how to arrange your study life here. And this is the picture we are taken by the New Year ceremony. Uh, at the end of the every year, we basically holding a very happy New Year ceremony uh, involving all the students, including the undergraduate graduates and foreign students together. And also the students take their family together, okay? And this is a picture about the thesis defense for the students. And then we do have a tutorial help group. So for you to quickly uh, um, be used to the life living in China and some of our Chinese students would like to help you to, to tutorial your life here. And this is a picture uh, taken by the student representative delivering a speech on the university graduation ceremony. Okay. And these are the pictures taken by the teachers uh, after the class over. And this is the ending of the panel data classes. And this is Dr. Li. And this is the ending of the Chinese classes. And also some of the competition for our foreign students to participate. This is a one belt, one road business uh, competition. And also we often have some discussion about our thesis ongoing work. Okay, these are the pictures we have taken. And uh, because of the coronavirus, these two years, we have to hold some online seminars and classes uh, to, to make our regular education, training the students. So these are the pictures we have taken uh, from the, 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 the teacher's class. And, and the university, we actually have a very effective uh, online system to help you to understand how to use the system and also uh, you can see some recording of the courses afterwards so uh, you might don't worry about your uh, the, the, the time difference okay and also the degree conferring ceremony and we do also have some a uh, like new year ceremony and holding every student together with the families uh, because some of the students actually come in here with their family and we we love the kids and come together to uh, do the ceremony okay and for the life in the i harbor campus we have a new place and it's actually a very modern uh, campus uh, with the very new uh, hardware 
like we have some coffee corner, we have very clean canteen, including Muslim canteen, and also we have a four unit uh, dormitory for one room for one student. And, and this is the picture of our center uh, a, when you just come out from the elevator. Okay, so I think you will have a very wonderful life here in our campus. Okay, here are the application tips and the contacts. The application website of the School of International Education of our XJTU is like this. And if you want to contact with our JCER, our secretary, Mr. Zheng Li, Ms. Zheng Liping, email and telephone here and here are some tips for you to refer and uh, because every year our professors always get some email from the unknown students to ask for the acceptance letter so basically in our center the applicants should strictly follow the application instruction of ISIE school of the international education the the all the material like incomplete fake false materials submitted will not be accepted and also during the app applying process you do not need to contact the professor for acceptance letter because the professor actually don't know you before didn't know you before so it's difficult for them to give you the acceptance letter directly. So you just send all your material to our secretary and our center will review the materials by a group of referees and we will organize the interviews for you individually. So after that, our director, Professor Yu Sen Guo will sign the acceptance letter for you on behalf of our center. So these are the second important issue I need to mention. And the third one is that material supervisors confirmation will be after the course study. And uh, because some of the students actually, they didn't study economics before. So in the very beginning, if he choose the supervisor it's difficult because he don't know, he even doesn't know uh, who's research area is interested or not. So after one year study, our center began to choose the supervisor. So this is our principle. So these are the three basic tips for our center and for you to refer, okay? So finally, we'll come to our JCER and join our happy family. Then the last part, question and answers. So if you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, uh, thanks, Professor Zhang. Uh, thanks for your very detailed introduction. Uh, because I just saw uh, quite a few students asking questions about scholarships and applications. So uh, maybe uh, I'll get to show from the School of International Education about our infos on application mm -hmm. and admission. Is that all right? Okay, of course. Uh, Okay, thanks. Uh, then uh, I'm going to share a presentation with all the students. Just wait a minute. Okay, please. So let me just close. Okay. It's okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, thanks again for uh, Professor Zeng's very detailed introduction about the study and life in the JCER and from the International Students Admission Office, I'm going to introduce you about the scholarship and how to join us in the Xi'an Jiao Tong University. So first of all, it's about our scholarship system. As uh, Professor Zheng have introduced, uh, all our schools and majors are uh, quite comprehensive, offering uh, different levels of degree education from bachelor to master and PhD. And correspondingly, we have a quite comprehensive scholarship system, which is also from the bachelor to master and PhD. So first, as you can see, is that uh, the international freshman scholarship, which is for the bachelor students. Uh, there are three prizes 
for uh, this scholarship. The first one is an exemption of all the tuition fee of first year. And the second prize is an exemption of 50% of the tuition fee. And the third prize is a 30% exemption. And there is a plus, which is a monthly living allowance. And the detailed amount is determined by your uh, performance during your selection and your study in the first year. And after that, we come to the level of postgraduates for the masters and PhDs. And here are the scholarships programs we offer. The first one is the Chinese government scholarship, because I have just saw some of you are asking questions about this kind of scholarship in the chatting room. So here is quite a detailed introduction of this. Uh, this is for the postgraduate students first. And there is, uh, it includes an exemption from a tuition fee and a free accommodation and a comprehensive medical insurance and a monthly living allowance, which is 3,000 for master and 3,500 for PhD per month. That's uh, quite enough amount actually to, for you to live and study in Xi'an. And then the second scholarship is the XJTU Suyuan scholarship. This one comes from the sponsor of the university and it includes an exemption from the tuition fee and a monthly living allowance. And the third one is the Xi'an Belt and Road Scholarship. And this is sponsored by the city government of Xi'an and it only includes a monthly scholarship. The last one is the International Chinese Language Teacher Scholarship. Well, actually this one is for the Chinese language studies, so I'll just uh, skip it. But if you have uh, friends or classmates who are interested, you can also introduce this to them. So, the next part is how to join us as for uh, how to apply for XJTU's admission. The first one is the eligibility. There are some basic requirements for bachelor's, master's, and PhDs. Uh, first one for bachelor's is the age and the health limit. Uh, for age, you have to be between 18 to 25 years of age and uh, in a good health status to apply for bachelor studying at XJTU. And after that, you have to get a valid foreign ordinary passport. And the third one is that you have to get a high school or advanced diploma to apply for venture study. And the fourth requirement is that Chinese proficiency must be above HSK4, uh, scoring 108, with a minimum of 60 in all subskills. The application time is actually started, uh, it's from December 1st this year to June 30th next year. And there will be, during your application, there will be an admission review by our university, both uh, the School of Inter International Education and uh, the major school. This review includes your uh, Chinese language proficiency, your academic background, awards and achievements, and interview results. Uh, yes, there might be an online interview for the students. And the requirements for master and PhD is quite similar. And the first one is that uh, you have to be a non-Chinese citizen with a valid ordinary passport and in good health. Uh, the age and the degree requirement for master is that you have to get a bachelor's degree and be under 35 years of age to apply for master's study. And for the doctoral is that you have to get a master's degree and be under 40 years of age to apply for a PhD study. And the application time is also started right now uh, from November 15 this year to, uh, to the March 15th of 2022. And just as Professor Zeng have uh, mentioned for the acceptance letter, it's uh, actually is conditional. It's not mandatory for every student to get this. As introduced by P Professor Zeng, especially in the JCER, the, the professors don't know you in the first place. So you don't have to get this acceptance letter for your application. So here are some other application documents you should prepare before you uh, log into our system and uh, apply online. The first one you should uh, prepare is your original highest diploma and its notarized copies. Uh, the second one is your original transcripts in the latest study period. The third one is your certificate of language proficiency. And next one is the photocopy of your valid ordinary passport. And the next one is a completed original physical examination record for foreigners and a blood test report. I want to mention here that you can download a pattern for this form and use this form to do the uh, full check in your local hospital. Uh, the next one is the application fee. Uh, yeah, I, I have just saw some students asking whether there is free admission or free application for XJTU, but 
I'm sorry to tell you that there is a mandatory application fee, which is 500 RMB for the self-sponsored program and 800 RMB for the scholarship program, which means if you want to apply for the scholarship program I just mentioned, you have to uh, pay this application fee in the first place. And there are other documents may also be required according to the different uh, programs. And here are some notes for you uh, while pre uh, preparing your documents. The first one is that the documents needs to be scanned, uh, which means it has to be clear enough for us to see and upload it into the application system for review. The next one is that incomplete applications will be rejected, just as Professor Zhang mentioned, any uh, incomplete or fake or false documents will be rejected. Uh, the last note is that a notarized Chinese or English version are required because there are some students offering uh, their uh, documents made in maybe other languages like uh, Russian or Spanish, other languages. But uh, I'm sorry that we are only acceptable for Chinese uh, and English versions. And the next is our online application procedure. As you can see uh, above, uh, now we have this online application system and uh, here is the link. Uh, you just uh, everything is online now so you just have to first register in our online application system and uh, create your own application account and after that you just have to fill in your information including your personal information your study plan like what do you want to study for example gcer and uh, applied economics or theoretical economics after you fill in all your information you just upload all the documents i have just mentioned uh, like your diploma, your transcript, upload all this in the application system. And the first step is to pay the application fee. And after that, your application is completed. And uh, this is the contact for our School of International Education. Uh, we have a telephone, email, and school website all open for you to uh, contact us. And as you can see in this slide, that we are now open on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. And actually, today's webinar, all our introduction will be recorded into video and uploaded in uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for you to replay. So uh, if you want to stay tuned, you can take a screenshot of this slide uh, or just scan the QR code to follow us on these different platforms. Uh, this will help you to get the latest information of us. OK, once again. Welcome to XJTU. We uh, truly hope you can join us in the future. Thank you. And uh, guys, if you can, uh, oh, if you can hear me, uh, if you want to ask questions, uh, Professor Zeng and uh, Mia, we are here. And if you have questions, I think it's better for you to type in the chatting room because uh, some of you may have a poor uh, network connection. May maybe we cannot hear you very well. So it's better for you to type in the chatting room and we can answer that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, the GRE or GMAT requirement is not confirmed. Uh, if you have a score for GRE or GMAT, it's better. But uh, if you don't have it, that's not necessary. And the English proficiency certificate is that uh, we are now uh, actually uh, accept the IELTS transcript. And the requirement is above 6.0. If you have this transcript, uh, this official certificate is the best. But if you don't have it, then you can get a, a certificate from your university, proving that you are able to be educated in English language. That's also acceptable. Uh, else, it's not necessary for CSC. No, it's not. Uh, else, or TOEFL, or other uh, official certificate is all acceptable. Oh, well, I'm sorry. The recording of this webinar is, cannot be sent directly to your email because that takes too much of space. But you can uh, once again follow us on the YouTube because we will upload uh, this full video to that platform. Guys, if you're interested in other uh, programs like undergraduate programs or other majors, uh, you can stay tuned for our uh, School of International Education website because we will release the news for other schools and other majors webinar or uh, online information. Uh, if you have uh, questions regarding to the JCER or uh, applied and theoretical economics, I think this is the best time for you to ask it. Okay, I think maybe it's better for me to uh, share our contact in the chatting room so that you can follow us. Just uh, one minute. Okay, uh, I guess if you can check the chatting room, here is our uh, telephone, fax, and email. 
also our website. So I think for other uh, questions regarding application, you better go to our website for a detailed introduction. Uh, China is, <laughs> yeah, China is not blocked. Uh, actually, uh, there are flights uh, coming in and out every day, but actually the visa for international students is uh, for now temporarily suspended uh, because there's a national policy. Uh, not uh, all of you can come back to China. Also, we, we actually want to meet you right here as soon as possible, but it's a government policy and uh, we all have to wait for the border to open. September 2022 semester, uh, we are not sure right now, but uh, we, we truly hope you can come and uh, study in person at JTU next year. Uh, but we cannot, you know, say anything for the future. A certificate from our school will qualify us for the CSC scholarship. Uh, yes, yes, it's okay. Yeah, uh, a certificate from your school, your university, it's it's acceptable. Yeah. So guys, if you're asking about other majors or other schools, it's better for you to go to our school's link. There is a very detailed list for all the schools and all the professors, okay. And uh, once again, I will show you our school's website. Yeah, it's better for you to go there and find all the schools and majors we're offering at JTU. High school certification, yes, in English, is there needed? Uh, yeah, it is needed because uh, our bench programs, uh, the MBBS and BDS program, the medical programs are taught in English and they require an English proficiency test. Okay, guys, uh, I just saw that uh, we are running a bit uh, late of time. And uh, if there is no more questions regarding the GCER or the uh, economic study actually you well i'm afraid uh today is all of our webinar so far and again i want to thank professor wei hong Zeng to join us in this very beautiful afternoon of uh, xian i know uh, we're temporarily under a little lockdown of the covid 19 impact but uh, anyway we will get over it and thanks again for all the students to join us online this afternoon i know it's quite a hard time for all of us to uh, continue our work and study. But anyway, we made it. Thanks again. Thanks, Professor Zhang. Yeah, thank you so much. And at last minute, I would like mm -hmm. to say that the, our China has over 5,000 years of civilization and history. If you want to study in China, Xi'an, the ancient capital of the 13 dynasties, must be your first choice. It's a good place for experiencing in Chinese culture. And if you want to study economic in mainland China, I think JCER of X JTU must be one of your best choice. We are doing high standard and serious economic education here. Welcome. Okay, thanks Professor Zhang, a very uh, beautiful introduction of Xi'an of China. Thanks again. And uh, okay. guys, there will be a following webinars of different schools of X JTU in next weeks and the following days. Uh, please stay tuned and uh, maybe see you next time. Thanks again. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Same. Thank you for all the students. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.